The budget standoff is raging in Washington. The Republicans want to cut $61 billion. The Democrats want to cut $6 billion initially. That's on top of the $40 billion that the White House has already taken out. So how will we ever find common ground? What kind of cuts could Tea Partiers and progressives agree on? I think the biggest problem in Washington is they're talking about looking at this much of the budget. We're talking about looking at the portion of the budget they call non-military discretionary spending. But then there's military spending. Nobody's talking about that. If you eliminate all of the non-military spending, you won't balance the budget. And conservatives in my party will have to admit that there's waste in the military budget. Will you look at that? I couldn't agree more with that assessment from Tea Party supported Republican Senator Rand Paul. Why? Look, take a look at the numbers. There's a 2012 federal budget. It's $3.7 trillion. Social Security appears to be the largest expense, followed by defense spending, Medicare, non defense spending, Medicaid, and the interest that we're paying on our debt. But Social Security and Medicare pay for themselves. You already paid payroll taxes on that, and that's why Social Security, for example, has a surplus. So the picture looks a lot different when we take them out. Now the largest expense is defense. We're, spend, we're spending almost one third of our budget when you take out Social Security and Medicare on defense. But most of all the congressional cuts, but most of the congressional cuts, I should say, are taking place in non-defense discretionary spending. They're trying to cut the fat from small potato programs while ignoring the giant elephant in the room. Luckily, on this program, we can reach bipartisan agreement on this issue. Joining me now are Congressman Peter DeFazio, Democrat from Oregon, and Congressman Ron Paul, Republican from Texas. Uh, we appreciate both of you coming on. It's a great pleasure to have you here. First, let me start with you, Congressman Paul. I take it that you agree with your son that we should get into the defense budget. Well, maybe he agrees with me. Who knows which way it went? <laughs> but, you know, the one thing that I uh, am careful about, I think you use the word, and I think he does, and sometimes I, I correct him, because I don't want to cut defense. I want to cut military. And there's a big difference. Militarism doesn't provide defense. As a matter of fact, I think our foreign policy and militarism actually diminishes our defense. So I'm for it. I think we could cut hundreds of billions of dollars off. But you have to change policy. If, if we assume we're the policemen of the world, and we have to get involved. I mean, right now with this financial crisis that we're in, you know, we have people talking, Republicans and Democrats, about how are we going to get involved in Libya? <laughs> you know, I, I just cannot believe that. And, and quite frankly, I don't think they're all that serious. If we were serious enough, I think there'd be more bipartisanship about doing something and, and, and more of us getting together and cutting spending. Right. Congressman DeFazio, uh, look, you two are right there, Republican, Democrat. Uh, I I want to ask both of you guys how many of uh, people from your own side you can rally. So to to you, the, how many Democrats will get on board for saying, hey, you know what? We just simply spend too much money on the military, and there's a lot of pork and waste in there, and that we should actually begin that process of looking into it. Well, two weeks ago, we had a great test of that when we finally defeated the second engine for a single engine jet fighter. It was the best joke I had going to my district. I'd ask people in meetings, how many engines do you think it takes to fly a single engine jet fighter? And they'd always look at me puzzled like you're nuts. I'd say, well, inside the Beltway, it's two. Uh, that was a very bipartisan vote. And I think that could be a test case for further cuts in unnecessary weapon systems, perhaps a quicker drawdown in Iraq, Afghanistan. Why are we still in Europe, uh, you know, 70 years or 60 years after the end of, of World War II, uh, you know, and other uh, overseas missions, Japan, we allow them to spend a tiny fraction of their budget on the military because we provide their military shield. It's time for some of these other countries to grow up. Peter, you know, you, you have a very positive statement there, and I agree with you. But in that same bill, we had an amendment, I think it was 600 million to cut from infrastructure in Afghanistan. We got about 120 people to vote for it. Right. So we're still building bridges in Afghanistan at the same Right, but I, I agree with you. Certainly, that was an encouraging vote. And when I had to, well, do I, with I was with you on that vote because <laughs> I want to build infrastructure here in the United States. We need the yeah, jobs. We right. need the infrastructure. I, I love this love coming out here on this program. <laughs> All right, so Congressman Paul, and this is real bipartisanship. But uh, you have to look at this honestly. When you when we look at defense, it has historically been the Republican Party that has blocked anything in, in that direction. They say, "Oh my God, you're soft on defense. I can't believe the Democrats would do this, etc." How do you get? Beyond on that in your own party. 
Well, yes, I agree with what you said, but you can't exonerate the Democrats either. I mean, look at what our president's doing right now. He's the one that's pushing to do more in Libya. He had a very strong statement about our need to be involved in Libya. He's, he's expanded the war in Afghanistan. He's issuing the drone attacks in Pakistan. So I don't think, I think we have sometimes too much bipartisanship going in the wrong direction. Foreign policy never changes. Rhetoric a little bit. But Obama's getting very close to the George Bush foreign policy. Policy. I think monetary par policy is bipartisan. And I think when it comes to Republicans cutting spending, they act like Democrats and they don't cut spending even on the welfare side. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's a bipartisan mess. And I think that represents the fact that a lot of Republicans and a lot of Democrats outside of Washington still expect a lot from Washington, a lot from our government. And they need to get rid of that appetite for big government and their programs. And maybe uh, we would do a better job here. And Congressman DeFazio, look, let's get realistic here. The reason that you guys, yes, you won on the F-35, but you've lost a lot of votes together, no matter how bipartisan you guys have been on that issue and, and, and finding agreement, it's because, as Congressman Paul says, there's still a lot of bipartisanship on the other side taking money from defense contractors. I mean, well, that's got to be relevant, right? Yeah, no, it's, it's a substitute, very inefficient, uh, very ineffective jobs program. I mean, President Eisenhower warned us about this in the 1950s and talked about, you know, when you produce weapons you don't need, how that is stealing from the domestic economy, from real productivity, uh, from feeding people, educating people, building our own infrastructure. So, no, it, it has been a bipartisan problem. You know, there are a lot of Democrats who are worried about, uh, I'll give a quick example. Ron and I tried to eliminate the selective service for, for the draft, which we're never we're going to have uh, as an amendment in that bill. We, we got a pathetic 130, 40 votes, uh, and Democrats and Republicans stood up and said, this is a national security issue. It wasn't a national security issue. It's, it's a moribund bureaucracy that we don't need, and they say that a big part of their budget goes for uniforms. I've never seen a selective service uniform and entertainment. Yeah, they're very entertaining. So, yes, there is a bipartisan problem here. Democrats are worried about, and Republicans, being called soft on defense. And as Ron pointed out, there's a difference between military spending and waste and defending the real interests of the American people. All right. Well, Congressman DeFazio and Congressman Paul, uh, it's a pleasure to see you guys together fighting uh, on this issue and actually trying to change the framing in Washington where people refuse to talk about defense generally, but we've got to since it's such a huge part of the budget. Thank you both for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.